Stop believing these tennis myths. They could actually be holding you back. And science says otherwise. Hi, my name is Erik Vaneke. I'm a human movement scientist from Amsterdam and I'm also a tennis coach. I've been educating players for over 13 years now and for the past five years I've also been educating tennis coaches with accredited workshops and online courses. Chances are at least one of these myths has shaped the way you train or at least play tennis. I know some of them influenced me when I started playing and when I started coaching. So let's break them down together and see what the science says. Myth 1. You can't improve coordination as an adult. Many players think that coordination is something you learn as a kid or you don't. And that after a certain age you can't improve it anymore. But research shows this is far from the truth. Even adults can make significant improvements in coordination through specific training. Coordinative abilities like balance, rhythm and reaction speed can all be trained well beyond childhood. For example, playing small-sided games or playing new sports can create adaptations in our plastic brain that improve coordination. It is fair to say that you maybe have missed some windows of opportunity when you were younger, but that doesn't mean you can't improve your coordination at a later stage. So instead of thinking, I'm too old to get better at this, realize that coordination is just like any other skill. If you can train it, you can still improve it. Myth 2. Always keep your eyes on the ball. This is a tip I hear very often and I've given it myself to players in the early days when I started coaching. It sounds logical and of course you need to track the ball. But elite players don't just stare at it. Scientific studies show that anticipation is just as important, if not even more. Top players also register everything about their opponent, not just the ball. They pick on a very subtle cues from the opponent. The angle of their racket, the way they move, or the way they're gonna hit the ball. They combine ball tracking with constant information about the opponent's body language. That's why elite players seem so fast. They aren't reacting, they are anticipating. So don't just look at the ball. Also try to gain all the information from your opponent's movement and position. Myth 3. Block practice is the fastest way to learn. Repeating the same movement over and over, like hitting a forehand 100 times from the same spot, feels like making progress. But research shows this is often an illusion of learning. You get better in that exact drill, but not necessarily in tennis. This is partly due to the fact that tennis is such an open sport. With open we mean that it's far less predictable where you have to go or where the ball is gonna go, opposed to sports like swimming or running. We know due to research that it seems that blocked practice isn't the best style of practice for open sports like tennis. Random practice, where you mix the shots, alternate between drills and vary the situations, creates more lasting learning. There's also the concept of skill transfer, the ability to transfer a skill from situation A to situation B. Playing multiple sports, practicing different movement patterns, and adding variability to your tennis practice all help with skill transfer. That's why, unfortunately, random practice feels harder in the short term, but in the long term, it makes your skills more adaptable and more resilient under pressure. Before we move to myth number four and five, my personal favorites, be sure to hit the like button if you've gotten any value from this video. And if you like these science-based tennis tips or a structured approach to tennis, be sure to subscribe. Let's get on with it. Myth four, strength is all you need for pace. Strength training is important, but in tennis, strength alone isn't gonna cut it. What matters more if you'd like to play with pace is power, the ability to produce force quickly. Strength alone is simply how much force you can generate. Power is also about how fast you can apply that force. Tennis strokes rely heavily on maximum acceleration, not just maximum strength. That's why exercises like fast medicine ball throws or specific biometric training are so effective for tennis. If you practice slow, heavy strength training, you might miss the transfer to tennis. If you want to hit harder, focus on explosive tennis specific power. And that's a nice little bridge to the last myth. Myth five, the hardest hitter is always the best player. It's easy to believe that the players that hit the ball hardest are also the best players, but the science tells a different story. The best performers are usually the ones that control the ball best. 
Studies show that consistency, precision and decision making are stronger predictors of success than sheer power. Of course, hitting hard is useful, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Players who mostly focus on power often make more errors and are far more predictable. So the next time you watch a pro match, pay attention. The winners most of the times aren't the hardest hitters. Most of the times they're the smartest ones. So which of these myths surprise you the most? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to read more extensively about all the scientific references, see the links below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you taking the time and see you in the next one.